becomes calling as a light breeze across the tall grasses, whispering as it ripples. Our spirits, like the grasses, are moved. We call it grace, the disposition to do something more for others. Actions big and small are acts of grace, when done with the right intention and the right goals. While grace is perceived to be spiritual, its manifestation is personal. We reveal it in our actions toward others. In other words, grace is like character. We can think about it, but it's only evident when we act upon it. Every one of us can point to people in our community who resonate grace. These are the men and women who spend their time working to make the lives of others better. These are people who give of themselves without asking why. They see a need and they fulfill it. They don't seek recognition, but it should be our responsibility as citizens to give it to them. And for those good people, that's why I wrote this book, Grace, A Leader's Guide to a Better Us. It's a celebration of the good they do for others. Grace becomes inspiration, be it in life or athletics or art. We look at people with grace and find that their actions motivate us to do something better, if only to appreciate what it means to live life by paying attention. We find grace in joy. Acting in the spirit of grace is deeply joyful. We take joy in making things better for others. Joy also gives us personal happiness. You can say there is grace in the simple enjoyment of a flower, a conversation, or a funny situation. Grace reveals itself in the joy we take in life. Grace, some say, is love. How can you want to do better for others if you don't love them? And you can only love them if you humble yourself. Humility is integral to grace because it teaches us to put others before ourselves. In doing so, we acknowledge our limitations, but also recognize our capacity to do better. There's another form of grace that we see in the physical world. It's the fluidity of motion that athletes, actors, and dancers possess. It's also the movement that artists give their art, be it a painting or a piece of music. Grace also holds a sense of equilibrium and balance that moves forward. Grace is spiritual as well as physical. It combines the will to perform with the will to live in ways that renew our sense of community as participants in life itself. This book explores grace in five ways. Conveniently, I have turned the word itself into an acronym. G is for generosity, the will to do something for others. R is respect, the dignity of life and work. A is action, the mechanism for change. C is compassion, the concern for others. E is energy, the spirit that catalyzes us. Grace is rooted in working for the greater good. It demands that we act with respect and compassion toward others. It requires energy that, like grace itself, is generative. Grace renews itself through practice as well as by appreciating it, doing one's best, enjoying the highlights, mourning the losses, and doing so in the full spirit of life, in forgiveness, mercy, joy, and humor. Grace is ultimately a gift to ourselves. Our challenge is to use it wisely and use it often.